Hello, I'm Sharon Ross with the Capital City Arts Initiative based here in Carson City, Nevada. <clears throat> we are in the Kroll Boardroom in the Community Center where we have an exhibition space. This exhibition is by Marietta Sophie Paul and it's titled Scuttled Transformed. And we're gonna talk to Marietta about her work. Marietta, welcome. Thank you. So I understand in your career in the arts you started as a silversmith. So please tell us about being a silversmith first. Okay. Um, I started this at age 15. We had an after school class and the first time I touched metal, it was magic. And I chased that till age 60. So I make, I worked in the jewelry industry for quite a long time and the last about 15 years I've been making what I call holy hardware. And that's all the bright shiny silver stuff you see at the front of a church at their altar. I make chalices and patents and processional pieces, but that's what I've been doing in silversmithing. Marietta, where did you learn printmaking? I learned that up at WNC. I have been doing silversmithing and I love it, except my shoulders don't like it after a while and I had to get surgery. So I started looking for something that was a little kinder to my body. So I went up to WNC and I took a course in drawing which surprisingly was really difficult. I can make three-dimensional build things, but going on a flat two-dimensional plane was difficult, but I kept at it. And then Rachel Stiff started working on building up a printmaking program, and I signed on and I've been there ever since. Tell us about the show's title, Scuttle to Transform. What was scuttled? How was it transformed? Okay, that works on several different le levels. As I said previously, as a silversmith, I started getting a little creaky and physically unable to do that. So my silversmithing was semi-scuttled and I, as an artist, was sort of scuttled and at a loss. So that's at that level, but on a more literal sense, printmaking has a high, it's a high learning curve. And I had a lot of prints that were not good. And this huge pile of rejected prints came, started getting higher and higher. And I didn't know what to do with them, but I'm Scottish, I don't like wasting things. So I didn't want to throw anything away. And what happened, I was sitting there, hmm, what do I do? And I thought of quilt making. You'll see over here these three prints. I started cutting them into various shapes and I used a quilt making pattern, a friendship quilt pattern. And I cut them and fit them into that. So if you look very closely into this, you will see elements from each of these prints in this piece. So that was my first scuttled transform piece. So, so these three pieces, the wine bottle piece and the cat with the burgundy mat. And the things that go crunch. Are all combined into this piece over all your right this. shoulder. Yep, and if you look, you can see like a little mouse right there from Tempting Fate. All the darker pieces are from the, that print on the, I forgot the name of it, on the end. And then you'll see you can still see some words from the When Perfection Breaks. Uh, Marietta, do you have a fish pond at home with koi in it? Because you've got several very wonderful pieces with koi. Um, no, I don't. I'm not, I really am not a fish person. What you're seeing is cat, I called them catfish because if you look into the scales, this is another scuttle transform, each scale has a cat, the face of a cat. They are taken from the series, the habitation prints, all the series of animals. A lot of those dry points didn't turn out. So I'm like, again, what can I do with this? And I thought, I can make a catfish out of cat faces. <laughs> and you will see, well, there's some mice in there too. 
But if you look carefully, you'll see the little cats. Marietta, <clears throat> the water behind the catfish, um, why don't you talk about what that is? Well, another level of scuttled transforms. I do a lot of walking in Carson City, and this is such a beautiful place, but you'd be surprised how many tin cans I find on the side of the road. So not in the heart of being a good citizen and cleaning, but rather being an artist who saw vibrant color and design, I started picking up those cans and cutting them to make, I mean, it's really vibrant. And I'm very attached to my tin cans. So that's where they came from. So pretty much, and there's some bottle tops here too. But it's so funny when I'm around and about, I'll see a, a can that has really pretty design and I walk up to strangers and ask if I could have their can when they're done. It's, it makes for interesting conversations. Marietta, your exhibition covers a variety of subjects. You've got animals, um, now cat, known as catfish as well, cats and dogs, um, and some houses. So tell us about this group of images. Okay, <clears throat> I started a new, a technique I started learning was dry point. And the first one I did is somewhere down the wall. But I really liked doing my animals. So what you see, all of these critters are the animals I've had throughout my life. And I thought, that seems kind of trite. I have to sort of make this grown up looking. So that's why I did the three habitations, which if you look in the windows, you'll see little critters. It sort of ties them all together. From the first two animals, Gertrude and Bijou, they're here. From my last dog, Rocky, every animal that I have had in my lifetime is in here. And again, you'll see the catfish, and they've got the little, you know, there's Gertrude. There are a bunch of little cats in, in there, and they all come from these prints. So are the, the buildings, the three houses, are those houses that you lived in as well? No, those are houses from the corners of my mind. I'm always really intrigued with architecture. And I used to go to Charleston and walk up and down the streets and I love the houses there as well as Boston. So I sort of did a mashup and they're not actual houses I've ever seen. They're just, I just liked making them and I've fussed them up a lot. They look like, if you've ever heard of American Painted Ladies, they have a lot of, you know, fussiness and different color to them. Obviously, these don't have color. But again, if you look in the windows, you'll see some critters. Marietta, tell us about the different printmaking techniques you've used in these pieces. Okay, what you see here, these are all reduction block. And what that means is I have a multicolored print and I, the first carving of it, I carve, for this one, I just carved out to get the white, the clouds. The next carving was gray, which you don't see in there, and then green, darker green, and black. But the trick with reduction um, block print is you have to have your registration on. You have to be printing at the same place. And you'll see here I didn't quite get it. The reason being I started this piece right before COVID shut down the college. 
and I lost my sheet that I used for registration. So I started winging it, and that is never a good thing. So I was not very happy. This is the best one that came out, and it's not really that great. So to make, you know, I like to make lemon, lemonade out of lemons, excuse me. So this is one of the layers. And I printed that, a bunch of these out as is. But, but you can see there, and that is hidden behind the darker green and the black. So I did that. This is actually what would be the last layer, the, the black layer. And I thought that looked really interesting too. So I sort of used my reduction, because once you carve, and print a certain amount, then I carve away a lot of areas. So there's no going back, but you can go forward. Um, so that's why you see these different images. And the black one, I was just playing around. But I have a reduction block here, which did turn out. And you can see the different colors in it. I started, the first color you pull out is white, so I carved out those areas that are white. The second color I did was yellow, and then gray, carve more, and then gray, and finally black. The world I had to do as a separate stamp because I couldn't meld that color into, because you're layering it one on top of the other, so there's a lot of thinking to it, which sometimes good, sometimes bad. Um, going back to your earlier career, um, some of your silver work is in the Ringling Museum of Art. Tell us about that. Um, it's not, it was in an exhibition. They had, it was Gothic art in the Gilded Age, and they wanted to use my work to show I'm sort of the bridge between my medieval counterparts. So they had a chalice and a paten, some of my hammers and forming tea stakes. And what's really interesting about that was I used the same tools that the people a bazillion years ago, not quite a bazillion, but close. I'm using the same tools, the same hammers, the same stakes, so that's why they wanted to show my work. It was only there for as long as the exhibit was there. This was a traveling exhibit, so, but it was, what was really fun about that though is I got to lecture on it as well, and it's kind of amazing to be the living person speaking of all the craftsmen that came before me. I'm the living generation of it. And it's, it, was, it was really neat to do. What are you working on now? I am I'm really well enmeshed in printmaking. Today, the print I'm working, another reduction cut, which I hope the registration works, <laughs> and monkeys. I've been on this monkey swing, and the prompt for this piece was your quiet place. So I have a monkey sitting, leaning against a tree, drawing because, or painting, doing art is what gives me peace. But the top of the tree is filled with a bunch of monkeys looking down to represent the monkey mind, which is the un, not quiet, peaceful mind. So I'm having fun. Marietta's show will be in here through July 6th. Uh, you can enter into the Crow Boardroom for any public meeting that they have. And you can check on the city calendar, go down to full schedule on their homepage and you'll find the, the dates. Um, so you can follow Capital City Arts Initiative on Facebook and Instagram and see what we're doing on our website and sign up for our newsletters on our website homepage. And we wanna thank the city for the use of the room and all of our funders for their generous support. So Marietta, thank you. Thank you, and thank you, Capital City Arts Initiative. People like me getting to have an exhibit is amazing. So thank you, and people out there, if you want to support, support the arts, Capital City Arts Initiative, it's been a fabulous opportunity, and 
it's really neat to be able to talk about my art in a public venue, so thank you. Well, we appreciate it. Thank you.